and i welcome all the participant uh, to the uh, fifth earning call overall and uh, the second earning call for this financial year uh as you all know uh, we we uh, uh, we connected you with the last september number results september 2022 we are again uh, connecting you back uh, with uh, uh, september 23 almost uh, uh five quarters and one full financial year has been uh, uh, a connection between uh, you and us uh, it was a very exciting journey for us for last uh, 12 months um always five star uh, we are proud to say we are a collection first uh, uh, nbfc uh, because we feel growth is a very uh, uh, a lighter side but collecting back is going to be the difference between uh, any lender so to start with uh, to start with the numbers i'll start with the collection side uh collections overall collections uh, came out very well uh, we'll say this is excellent quarter from a quality perspective uh, the collection efficiency uh, comparing with last quarter moved from 99.6% to over 100% and the unique customer which we call collecting a emi from every customer uh which we measure by d1 c1 uh the terminology what internally we call uh moved from 97.5 to 98% so the 98% of the customers have paid uh, emi in each month in last quarter that's a very encouraging uh, uh sign so the forward flow is been arrested to that extent the next important metric in collections is 30 plus where people ask us Uh, i'm happy to say the 30 plus has also dropped down from 9.68% last quarter to 8.59% uh, this quarter and uh, another color of collections what we say the current to the arrears ratio of the customers uh it it was at 78% of the customers were in current and 22% of the customers were in arrears in last september and it moved to 85% of the customers in current and 15% of the customers uh, in arrears in june we have bettered that in september uh, we are close to 87% precisely 86.5% of the customers are in current now and uh, with only 13.5% per uh, percent of the customers are in arrears uh, this we will uh, as guided to the market we will reach uh, this to 90% that is 90% of the customers will be in current and 10% alone will be in the arrears uh, going forward maybe in next two quarters maybe june of uh, 2025 and uh, going taking you to the next important collection metric which is a non performing asset uh, 90 plus we call it also bettered from 1.08% in june quarter to 1.07% in september quarter uh, coming to the irac stage 3 as for the circular new circular uh, even there we have bettered ourselves we were at 1.41% in june quarter which has come down to 1.37% so all in all the collections on all metric and all buckets have shown a tremendous improvement that again uh, uh, proves that the uh, five star is a collection first uh, uh, business model uh, and uh, now taking you to the business side uh, which is very important uh, first from the branch uh, we have opened close to 70 branches in last quarter which is one of the highest in history of five star so the total branch count uh, is at 456 branches as we uh, uh, stand today uh and uh, because of uh, branches getting opened and uh, uh, business officers getting joined in the new branch our loan disbursement is also seen all time high uh, it was at uh, 1132 crores in june it has gone up to 1204 crores uh, registering a 6% uh, increase and registering a 50% increase comparing to last year and uh, this has resulted in a, a good growth in aum uh, we have moved from 7583 crores in june to 8264 crores in september with a growth of 9% sequentially 
and 44% year on year. Uh, both in quality and growth has resulted a good profits. Our incomes have gone up from 484 crores last quarter to 522 crores this quarter, uh, registering a growth of 8% sequentially and 44% year on year. And the profit after tax has uh, uh, moved from 184 crores to close to 200 crores a quarter, which is 199 crores, registering a 9% growth and 38% growth year on year. Uh, finally, before uh, handing over to Srikant, the borrowing side has also shown a good amount of stability. Our cost of borrowing on the book uh, is uh, in this quarter is at 9.7%, moved a tag lesser from 9.8%. And incremental borrowing uh, is coming at 9.5% at all in all. So from, from the collection side, business side, and the borrowing side, Five Star is able to bring out their best performance again in the September quarter, and uh, this will continue as we move forward. Now I'll hand it over to Srikant to go deeper into each subject, then we'll take, a, take up the questions. Thank you, sir, and a very good morning to all of you. Uh, as Mr. Patti has highlighted, you know, some of the numbers around collections, uh, business, as well as the borrowings. I'll just touch some final aspects and uh, hand it over to uh, to all of you for any questions that you may have. Uh, in terms of the financial metrics, uh, you know, we have uh, we have grown our AVM at about 9% sequentially to 8,264 uh, crores. Uh, coming on the back of, you know, very strong uh, branch expansions, so 70 new branches have been added for the uh, quarter. And uh, on the back of, you know, borrower expansion. So again, this has not been a ticket size like uh, growth, but it's a diversified growth that we have managed to achieve. So our borrower base increased from about 3.2 lakhs in June to 3.4 lakhs uh, as of September. Uh, in terms of the financial metrics, the yields have remained stable at around, you know, 24.2%. The cost of funds uh, surprisingly continues to show a decreasing trend, which means, you know, 5-star is looked at as a very attractive destination for lenders to uh, lend monies to. Uh, so while we are borrowing incrementally at 9.5%, the book cost dropped from 9.8 to 9.7, so which is a spread of close to 14.5%. Uh, the leverage has moved up a little bit, but given our strong approvals, I think we will still see a, very, a gradual uh, growth in the leverage in the quarters to come. So the NIMS are almost at about 17.7%, uh, translating to a return on assets of about 8.5% and return on equity of a little over 17%. Uh, we have also, despite the branch expansion, we have managed to keep the costs intact. Our cost of income is still only at about 36% or so, and we have been guiding all of you that even in a steady state, this number will be anywhere around 35 to 37%. Uh, in terms of the borrowing, uh, we have borrowed almost more than 2,000 crores uh, in the first uh, half of this year, uh, with about 1,150 uh, crores coming in the second quarter. The good part is we have managed to add two new banks, and the sizable sanctions have come in. In fact, one of the transactions, uh, while the execution spilled over to uh, 3rd October because of some change in holidays, uh, but including the cost, I think we are at about 9.5% incremental cost. And as we speak, you know, the incremental cost continues to stay around 95 to 9.6%. So uh, we don't envisage any significant uh, impact, uh, negative impact on the cost of funds in the quarters to come. Uh, collection efficiencies have stacked up really well, uh, like what Mr. Fatih highlighted. Uh, not just one plus, even our 30 plus has continued to show a decreasing trend. From about 9.68% last uh, quarter, uh, we have brought that down to about 8.59% for uh, this quarter. So we will continue to you know keep demonstrating this number uh, uh, on the lower trajectory, uh, which will ensure that you know the stress portfolio. For us, it's not a stress. A 30 plus is not a stress, but Typically, markets perceive 30 plus to be a stress portfolio. Even that number will start, uh, you know, continue to keep going down. Uh, we continue to maintain a good provision coverage ratio on our overall book, on the stage 3 assets, as well as on our restructured portfolio. On the overall book, we are almost at similar levels of uh, PCR. We were at 1.64% last quarter, just dropped by one basis point to 1.63%. On stage 3 assets, we have taken the PCR to about 50, a little over 50%. Uh, we were at about 44% uh, last quarter. 
this is again coming purely out of the ECL model and the overlays that the company uh, wants to uh, carry on its books on a conservative basis. Uh, restructured book continues to show a very uh, encouraging trend. Uh, most of the book is in the standard category. In fact, the overall restructured book has actually come down to 0.66% of our overall book. And even on this, we maintain close to 50% provision coverage. So we don't really envisage any risk emanating out of this restructured book in the uh, quarters or the years to come. Uh, PAT registered a, a 8 to 9 percent growth from about 184 crores last uh, quarter to 199 crores uh, sequentially. And uh, year on year, it uh, went up from 144 crores to 199 crores. Uh, network continues to remain robust. Capital adequacy is almost uh, close to 60 percent. So I think all in all, it's been a very uh, encouraging quarter in terms of asset quality, profitability, and the growth. And uh, given the branch network that we have built in, I think today we have a very solid platform to uh, ensure that we uh, we build our growth on this uh, strong edifice uh, in a very safe and uh, secure manner. So whatever guidance we have uh, given you, I think continues to stand. We are hopeful of you know uh, coming out with a strong set of results in the quarters to come as well. Uh, on that note, you know I will hand over to uh, any of you for uh, questions. Uh, happy to take the questions. Thank you very much. We will now begin the question and answer session. Anyone who wishes to ask a question may press star and 1 on their touchstone telephone. If you wish to remove yourself from the question queue, you may press star and 2. Participants are requested to use handset while asking a question. Ladies and gentlemen, we will wait for a moment while the question queue assemble. First question is from the line of Maharuk Adajania from Nuama. Please go ahead. Hello, congratulations. Uh, <clears throat> my first question is on your collection efficiency. You've always delivered well on collections, and you seem very confident that the customers in areas will improve from here on as well. So, what gives you the confidence? Because your collection infrastructure has always been strong. Is it that their uh, business environment is improving or that your collection efforts have intensified further? That's my first question. Yeah. Uh, um, good morning, Maruk. Uh, good morning. Yeah, uh, yeah. The business model what uh, Five Star has built uh, for last uh, 20 years plus or more than that is from the back of the uh, assessing the collection uh, uh, collection first and assessing the customer on the cash flow and character, leaving the collateral aside. So uh, what uh, gives us a confidence is the, the profile of customers whom we are backing for last uh, two decades, purely the shopkeepers and self-employed of a country, uh, they're, they are quite busy now. And their sales are coming back to the pre-COVID level and their margins are uh, sticking very well. So this is from one side. Second side, uh, as you know, we are a secured lender. We uh, lend our entire loans are secured. We lend on the uh, residential property where the customers and family members live in. Uh, this also gives the emotional attach and uh, seriousness uh, to the family members, even in during the uh, downturn uh, cash flow uh, uh, cycle. So these two things, uh, the service sector whom we are backing, and we are backing them with uh, uh, one of the strong collaterals, and of course the third one is important, the collection infrastructure, what we have put at the ground level. We are able to reach customers, or customers are able to reach us in 30 minutes of time. So all three put together, uh, our collections are always on the good side. There was some kind of pressure during COVID times because we didn't restructure a lot. So we are correcting those things and we are bouncing back better than all COVID, all pre-COVID collections metric, whatever Five Star has seen. So the st strength of the cash flow uh, and, the, uh, and the underwriting strength and the infrastructure collections we put up at the ground level, all three are giving us a good results quarter on quarter. That gives a strong belief that going forward, our collections will be better, better every quarter. 
what it's so so and so um, as the uh, of, uh, the business environment is improving which is why you're confident of holding credit costs here is it or because there has been strong growth post covid so as the portfolio seasons do we see inching up of credit cost or uh, it's going to stay at these levels so i think uh, the credit cost will stay in the same uh, sub 1% level uh, even during demo on covid 1 and 2 uh, we didn't see this getting spiked up uh, just spiking at very very short uh, period of time in covid and and got settled in where uh, our uh, uh, eventual credit cost has to be so i don't think the credit cost will have any impact uh, uh, even the growth picks in for five star because the growth what we are uh, getting into uh, the guidance of 35% plus uh, uh, year on year uh, it's not going to be a big growth for five star because we have already seen uh, big growths pre covid so we will know how to uh, underwrite the customers keep the collections intact so it doesn't have any impact on the credit cost going forward got it sir so and my last question is on uh, attrition so uh, in your segment of business uh, what has the attrition rate increased over in the last 6 months or in the last 9 months or is it manageable because attrition rate in the other bfsi space is uh, on the higher side so maru attrition has not uh, specifically increased uh, it is remaining at the same level uh, we are expecting that over the next 3 to 4 quarters things will gradually come down uh but i think we measure attrition very clearly at what level is the attrition happening both you know from an experience perspective and from a uh, you know the internal level perspective uh for us you know the attrition largely is happening at the people who are less than 12 months old in five star so you know that's uh, that's a manageable attrition and also it's happening at uh, mostly junior levels if you have to measure attrition at uh, branch managers and above uh it's an extremely low number for us and we continue to be one of the best in the industry as far as that is concerned so it's it's on the manageable level thank you so much thanks thank you the next question is from the line of subranshu misra from philip capital please go ahead subranshu sir please go ahead So actually, we'll we'll probably move to the next question, uh, which is from the line of Amir Bisay from GM uh, JM Financial. The next question is from the line of Aditya Padi from Girik Capital. Please go ahead. Hello. Yeah. Am I audible? Yeah. Uh, yeah hi sir good, good morning and congratulations on a wonderful set of numbers i just have one question regarding the portfolio yield on your slide 38 uh we can see there's a 20 bps drop in the q4 uh, q2 fi24 any reason for that uh so uh see you will you just have to look at this a little differently uh we will always have about 20 25 basis points movement in the yields because uh see uh, the way that the entire approval process happens is on an ideal basis uh while whatever is the difference that is charged to the customer on an overdue account is because of the uh, is through the penal interest methodology which doesn't come into the yield so whenever there is a reduction in overdues or whenever there is a little bit of uh, ideal numbers not uh, coming through uh, in terms of the repayment schedule you will see a slight movement in the yield so our uh, submission is that you know don't give too much of uh, importance to a 20 25 basis points movement in yield this way that way you will always see that happening uh, you know depending on how the dpd numbers stack up because we assume that the customer has actually made the payment while doing the approval for the uh, for the next month and the ot also gets added to the denominator so both these aspects may pull down the yield 15 20 basis points this way that way unless the yields are going to go you know above or below by more than 25 30 basis points is when the concern should be which we have never seen in the past so 15 20 basis points 
it is it is more accounting methodology rather than anything uh, you know impacting the underlying portfolio okay sir sure sure thank you so much for that thank you the next question is from the line of samir b say from jm financial please go ahead yeah hi uh, uh, am i audible yes yeah samir yeah uh, thank you for the opportunity and congrats on a strong set of numbers uh, but this i just wanted to ask on the competitive intensity in our core products uh, given that uh, we've been doing so well uh, have you seen competitive increase uh, intensity increase and and just some sense on the landscape going ahead yeah of course uh, competitive intensity will be there in the minds of many lenders whether whether that is going to uh, actually uh, take part at the ground level uh, we have to wait and see because everyone wanted to get into the lending to the shopkeepers and lending to the uh, self employed of this country that's the buzz word today uh, but my uh, own uh, view it's my own view is uh, the competitive intensity is increasing uh, sub 1 lakh level and above 10 lakh level uh there is a reason for it sub 1 lakh level uh, generally it's the microfinance or a uh, unsecured uh, uh, loans where you are underwriting uh, uh, takes uh, very little right you can underwrite it quickly uh, whether it is accurate or not we have to wait and see but your underwriting and your turnaround time is very quick uh, for a 10 lakhs loan and above you spend that much of good time for a, uh, underwriting that it is worth spending for that that's what market thinks uh, but uh, within between 1 lakh and 10 lakh we see lesser people getting into it either they see it is operationally not viable or the underwriting is becomes more challenge i think that's where five star uh, kicks in we have been doing it for last two decades very well our sweet spot is between 3 lakh to 5 lakh uh here uh, we of the of the the turnaround time for each file takes close to 5 to 7 days so we spend almost 3 days at the ground level uh, uh, to underwrite their character cash flow and collateral uh, you know it very well uh, but people find it very difficult to get into these kind of uh, loans to spend this much of time but for us it makes more sense because we have been doing it uh, year on year so keeping these things in mind i'm seeing uh, the competi- uh, competitiveness uh, is increasing but it is not as heavy in any other products that what we see uh, vehicles goals or home uh, uh, home loans uh, comparing to that the competitive intensity is lesser here because a lot of work has to be done by any lender uh, if he wants to be a long term uh, lender okay and and uh, what kind of players have you seen uh, incrementally looking at this product are these, are these sfbs or smaller nbfcs or any of the uh, 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 technology led companies also uh, are looking at this product samir i will say all i don't want to miss anyone because everyone wanted to get in uh, but uh, uh, let me uh, put a important point uh, see everyone wanted to get into at a, their different at their experience and, and their beliefs for example uh, just to take fintech i have already said in the conference call uh, fintech uh, they they wanted to uh, get into this uh, shopkeepers lending but i don't know how successful they are only the data you people have to uh, uh, share with us uh, but their product is little different and their place of operation is little different they are operating in tier 1 and tier 2 whereas we are, we are operating at tier 3 to tier 7 towns uh, which is even at 25000 population five star branch will be there uh, but at that location the technology penetration or the qr code penetration is not high so their uh, place of operations are tier 1 and tier 2 and our place of operation is little different and coming to the product also they lend to unsecured short term uh, cash flow based uh, uh, algorithm whereas we lend a bigger ticket size to set up a business or to repay a money lenders uh, uh, borrowing uh, for a longer term 7 years so i think uh, you have to see uh, lending to a shopkeeper can be the same but the product is different the uh, the place of operation is different fair enough uh, this is this is actually helpful secondly in terms of the technology piece is are we like fully live on salesforce across all branches now yeah i'll i'll ask ranga to explain that so uh, samir uh, we had given a uh, gliding path wherein we wanted to move from the old uh, erp that we had into salesforce 
So as of the uh, first quarter end, uh, we had gone live uh, only with uh, you know one state, which is Tamil Nadu. Yeah. As of uh, Q2, we had gone live with Karnataka and all the Central Indian uh, states, and uh, we had given a clear path that by end of Q3 we'll be fully live. So as we speak in October, we have gone live with one of our biggest states, which is Andhra Pradesh. So that leaves us only with one state, uh, which is set to go live, which is uh, Telangana. And incidentally, we are kicking off the training uh, in Telangana today. So we are well, uh, you know, clearly on the path to a complete integration into Salesforce by end of Q3. So Samir, I just wanted to uh, highlight one point here: uh, uh, transforming from one uh, ERP to another ERP is a big exercise. Uh, Five Star started this exercise from Q1 of this financial year, and we are successfully doing it on a quarter-on-quarter basis. If you see our disbursement or our growth didn't come under any effect at all. Right. So the the credit has to be given to our uh, uh, teams for planning which day to go live and when. So I think uh, we will completely move from a uh, from a existing ERP to the new ERP without uh, any disturbance in the growth and uh, 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 disbursements. So that is the key point. I don't see any growth uh, disturbance happening because of the ERP trans, uh, uh, transition. Uh, great, this is helpful, sir. One final question uh, to Shrikant on securitization. Uh, how does he see the opportunity going ahead? Or you want to keep the share at current levels? So, I mean, so we are definitely looking at uh, broad-basing our, uh, our borrowings uh, in terms of you know, various structures, in terms of the type of lenders uh, from whom we borrow. Uh, securitization is definitely an attractive uh, source given that it's a ring fence pool of receivables. There is a great announcement that we offer to the uh, lender. Uh, so we are looking at uh, securitization as one of the key avenues for our as a funding resource. But having said that, given that you know at the time of uh, giving these loans, these probably are a little more uh, cherry picked as compared to the other uh, loans. We would not want to be you know very high on securitization. So typically, we'll try and maintain it about uh, 25 to 35 percent of our overall uh, you know overall borrowings. In fact, we onboarded. Uh, you know, one very strong name, uh, that's the name that I said, which ideally should have gotten signed by 29 September, but because of the change in holidays, it got pushed to 3rd October. So Deutsche Bank has actually taken a 350 crore exposure through a, a investment in one of our PTCs. So, you know, we will continue to keep evaluating that uh, from, you know, the right kind of uh, lenders and for, uh, you know, good amount of quantum. Uh, given that it's an on-book uh, treatment today, we don't really distinguish too much between a term loan and a securitized uh, uh, receivable. So we will continue to look at it, but we will ensure that you know we don't probably cross, let's say, one third of our portfolio, uh, our borrowings in the form of securitization. Okay, great. Uh, this is helpful. Thank you and all the best. Thank you. The next question is from the line of Christian Chavade from Kota. Please go ahead. Thanks for taking my questions. Uh, you know, first one is on the on the uh, borrowings mix, and the share of NCD has kind of come down to four percent. Uh, you know, any specific reason? I mean, it's come down or it's kind of collapsed from like thirty-five, forty percent in the past. So, Nishant, uh, you know, there's no specific reason as such. Uh, a lot of NCDs got onboarded, especially you know during the COVID first wave and the COVID second wave. You know, as part of the TLTRO and PCG uh, schemes all of which uh, got redeemed in the recent past. And today, the markets are a little choppy, while definitely we are exploring uh, raising NCDs from uh, mutual funds, from uh, you know alternate investment funds, wealth uh, people. The interest rates are not that conducive. You know, if you compare uh, the differential between a bank term loan and an NCD interest rate, the difference is almost like 60, 75 basis points. So today, given that we are getting a good traction from banks through the term loans, and the fact that you know these are coming in at uh, more attractive rates and for longer tenures, uh, today markets are not willing to take exposures of more than let us say two to one half years, while our product is a seven-year loan. So keeping in mind the cost considerations, ALM considerations, we have been a little more skewed towards uh, term loans. But having said that, we are making all our efforts, you know, towards penetrating the NCD markets across various categories of institutions, and you will see that going up in the next few quarters. Because, uh, I mean, if I look at it, your cost of funding is nine and a half. You know, if we are saying 50, 75 basis points, we are effectively saying that, you know, 
the NCD demand is coming closer to around 10, 10.25, which is, you know, somewhere closer to probably what an A-rated company could have claimed maybe borrowing. So, you know, I'm just wondering that. Uh, so, so where the where the investors in these NCDs earlier mutual funds or where the banks or, you know, is it is it something that that probably a set of you know kind of kind of lenders are are today missing in our, our borrowing profile? Uh, I would probably say you know mutual funds uh, are are one set of categories that we have been targeting, uh, but you know they have been a little uh, you know choppy to say. Uh, they are they are not extreme. Like I said, you know they are not willing to take a longer tenor right on on an NCD. If today we have to do an 18, 24 month kind of an NCD, I think we will get that uh, for let's say 9.75 or 25 basis points over than what we are uh, coming to. So, uh, but other than that, uh, especially in the past, like I said, the TLTR one PCC NCDs were subscribed to by the banks. So, you know, the, as a category, mutual funds have been a little more nascent uh, in our portfolio. We probably had mutual fund borrowings only from one or two AMCs, uh, but that is something that we are trying to uh, to address. But today there is also a good amount of demand for NCDs from AIFs, from uh, wealth management firms. There are corporates who want to uh, subscribe to the NCDs as part of their investment strategy. So I think we will definitely see traction coming through. We are also, you know, making some headway with uh, mutual funds, but like I said, you know, it's a little, it's a little time-consuming process given, uh, you know, given the lack of complete stability in the market. But uh, sooner than later, I think we will have uh, NCD traction building up substantially. Sure. Uh, the second question is on growth. You know, the way you're tracking growth in the first half of the year, uh, would you want to increase the guidance for the year? Uh, um, uh, Pati uh, here, uh, if you recollect, uh, in the month of May and June, we came to the market and we uh, revised our guidance from 30% to 35%. Uh, having said that, our growth is uh, becoming stronger quarter on quarter. We are able to give 9% sequentially that, and that will continue, uh, if the, if next quarter also, also turns up well. We don't want to revise the guidance uh, immediately. We'll wait and watch how this uh, demand at the ground level, it is picking up. Uh, as we uh, uh, guided to the market, we'll open 70 to 80 branches. Already we have opened 100 branches uh, in first six months, 83 branches, more precise. Uh, so that, uh, uh, that shows that uh, the demand at the ground level is uh, picking up very well. But I don't want to uh, give too much of guidance changes this way and that way. Uh, so we will wait for next two quarters. Uh, definitely the same trend continues. Uh, March quarter, I will come out uh, with a revised guidance if needed. But as I uh, uh, speak now, the 35% growth guidance which we changed now becomes more stronger and stronger in our mind. Uh, this will be there for a longer period. So the question as you listen essentially was that are you able to see anything in the ground because of which you would sort of have a slightly softer guidance for the year or you say it's just oh okay. just a okay. Okay. okay yeah, yeah. I, I, understood. I understood uh, uh, I understood that uh, I don't see anything uh, uh, affecting our guidance growth because uh, we have set 35 percent growth and we have been growing at 40 percent year on year comparatively I don't see anything uh, affecting at the ground level. Uh, the cash flows are good, the demands are good. As I said, we opened more branches seeing a good demand, uh, mostly in the southern states and the new states which we wanted to get in. And um, month on month also our disbursements are going up. So I am not seeing any uh, uh, significant uh, insights from the ground level that will uh, affect the growth trajectory. Well, uh, thank you very much and all the best. Yeah, thank you. Thank you. The next question is from the line of Ajit Kumar from Nomura. Please go ahead. Go ahead. Yeah. Uh, thanks for uh, taking my questions and congrats for great set of numbers. Uh, so two to three questions from my side. Uh, first one is if I look at your state-wise AUM numbers, growth in AP has been quite strong from past five to six quarters, higher than the overall AUM growth. Uh, any specific reason for this and do you expect this trend to continue? That is my first question. Yes, uh, yes, uh, yes, Ajit, uh, I'll, I'll take up the first question. Uh, see, I think uh, the southern states are uh, a big contribution for our disbursement and our AUM. 
uh, close to 96% of our growth comes from south. Uh, if you bifurcate south, uh, uh, Andhra is now becoming a, a, a leading a contributor uh, to uh, uh, the disbursement and EM growth because we see good demand there. Uh, the population is very good, and you see a lot of towns interconnected very closely, in especially in the coastal part of Andhra, where our, most of our branches are being present. So we also see a very good collection uh, traction uh, in, in Andhra. Keeping all this in mind, we are investing a lot in Andhra, even from out of this 80-plus uh, branches which we opened uh, uh, for the first six months. I think more than 50% of the branches would have gone to Andhra. So we see a good demand there. The the collection culture is uh, good there. And the team, what we have gathered there is also giving us a very great result. All put together, we are uh, uh, Andhra is uh, improving uh, their AUM on a Q on Q basis. That doesn't mean Tamil Nadu, Telangana and Karnataka is lacking that. But comparatively, their Andhra's growth is, uh, looks pretty good. And we are very happy with the way in which we have taken up Andhra. Sure, sure, thanks. Uh, uh, second question is, how should we look at the, uh, the branch edition going forward? Uh, you had guided earlier, you know, 60 to 70 branch edition every year. But this quarter itself, we have added, you know, uh, roughly 70 branches. So what should be the momentum going forward as well? Yeah, momentum will be strong is what uh, uh, we hope uh, because uh, one of the key uh, metric uh, which induces us to open branches is the demand at the ground level. How does you measure that? Uh, when a branch is getting break even in six months, that means uh, the branch is uh, 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 garnering close to 2.5 crores of AUM in the first six months. So that gives a clear indication that uh, the customers wanted to move from informal to formal side and uh, and, and come to five star for their business and uh, housing needs. So this is the first and foremost indication what we have to see at the ground level. Till now, it's very encouraging. The branches what we have opened is breaking even at uh, six to nine months uh, as we speak. So I'm thinking uh, we will revise the guidance of branch opening now, uh, moving from uh, uh, 70 to 80, what we said uh, uh, this year, we will be at uh, close to, uh, surprisingly, at close to 120 branches for this full financial year. If all things goes well, uh, we will add uh, another 40 branches in the next six months. Thank you. Thank you. And lastly, 30 plus DPD has come down to 8.6%, uh, which is great. Uh, so looking at the current situation on ground, how should this number trend, let's say, in the remaining half of the year? So, Ajit, uh, there has been a clear focus uh, in making sure that uh, you know, the collection efficiency is tracking up extremely well, especially uh, the unique collection efficiency that we track. And uh, we have given you the numbers. So the unique collection efficiency that uh, Mr. Pati also mentioned in his opening remarks, we have crossed 98%. Uh, so that's clearly arresting the forward flows to a very, very significant extent. Um, so you will see this number getting improved even further. When we say that the current portfolio will go closer to 90%, obviously the 30 plus will drop even further to where we expect in the next two to three quarters. Sure, sure. Thank you. Uh, uh, that's it from my side. Thanks a lot. Yeah, thank you. Thank you. The next question is from the line of Jay Prakash Toshniwal from LICMF. Please go ahead. Thank you, sir. Uh, sir, taking the question of Nishant on uh, NCB side, uh, 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 is there a discussion with credit rating agencies to improve our rating? Uh, and if, if that, yes, and what are the KPIs we are looking to increase our ratings? Uh, so, Jay, I think uh, we have gotten the rating upgrade from A plus to AA minus uh, over the last couple of quarters. Some of the rating agencies came up uh, in, in the December or the, uh, the March quarter and one rating agency upgraded us in the last quarter. So, I don't think there is any immediate rating upgrade on the anvil. Uh, the next rating upgrade will probably depend upon the kind of portfolio growth that we uh, that we get to and uh, maybe a little bit... Uh, comfort of the rating agency in terms of the seasoning of the portfolio. Uh, but having said all this, Jay, I think the, the today the uh, NCD market not coming in is because, not just because of company specific factors, there are a lot of macroeconomic factors which are at play. Uh, especially, you know, there are companies who are willing to offer significantly higher rates to onboard the NCDs. 
and especially companies, uh, you know, the gold loan NBFCs, microfinance companies, and even vehicles, they are willing to take monies at uh, shorter tenures, uh, which is more attractive given the volatile interest rate environment. People are not willing to commit uh, for a longer period of time. Uh, they don't know, you know, how the entire interest rate scenario is going to stack up, which is where we are probably uh, not able to raise as much of NCDs as we would have uh, liked. Because we want at least for a three or a three plus year kind of a tenure, and the rates to stack up, you know, closer to what we are borrowing uh, either through the term loans or securitizations. But the numbers are a little wacky, uh, and given that you know our demand is being met by banks through term loans and securitization transactions, we have not aggressively gone out to uh, issue NCDs for uh, subscription. But having said that, there is a very clear uh, you know mandate to the treasury internally. That we will have to push the NCDs both in the form, you know, both through the private placement and also, you know, public issue of uh, NCDs which may come in, you know, during the later part of this year or early part of next year. So I think you will you will start seeing traction coming in the next few quarters, um, and the NCD proportion also going up uh, significantly. Hopefully, the interest rate environment also will get a lot more benign, uh, and then you know, with that stability, I think we should be uh, we should be attractively looked at even by the uh, NCD players be it the mutual funds, AIFs, or the wealth management firms, for them to invest money into our papers. Okay. Perfect, sir. Thank you. Uh, second question is, sir, on our AUM of state-wise. So, if we look into uh, the last two quarters, you have added Rajasthan. And if we see earlier from September 22 presentations, uh, Maharashtra, uh, Chhattisgarh, Uttar Pradesh, the growth is uh, pretty slow out there in terms of they're not also adding branches. Hardly we added uh, two branches in Rajasthan to seven. So, uh, anything specific you want to highlight, or it's just that you're building up the portfolio and being cautious on that, those, those, those these key factors. Yeah, uh, Jay, this is Pati here. Uh, Jay, your, your, your point is very clear and you picked up very well. Uh, that is our style. Uh, if you have been uh, hearing our conference call uh, uh, since last uh, uh, five times, we are very clear here to say we are not going to rush for the growth in the newer geographies. We don't want to do that. Uh, so the growth is going to come from the southern market where we have been lending and collecting for last 20 years. That gives us a great confidence whom we are lending, how we are lending, and how we are collecting the EMIs back. Having said that, uh, if you see three years, five years down the line, we don't want to be in a southern market alone. We want to be a pan-India market. So we are starting to invest uh, uh, people, uh, 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 starting to lend in the newer market slowly but steadily. So uh, the whatever the growth guidance I have given, I have only given keeping the south market in mind. And I don't want to pressurize my uh, rest of the country team uh, to show the growth and uh, lend into a wrong hands. So we want to be very uh, slow and we want to be very steady. If you see quarter on quarter uh, or uh, year on year, the stage what you said, we'll have a steady growth. But please don't compare that with the southern market because uh, that's our growth engine, whereas the rest of the country will become a growth engine at the right time. So now I'll okay. hand it over to Ranga to talk a little bit more on, on the rest of the country. So uh, Jay, Mr. Pati has uh, rightly summarized it. As far as any new state is concerned, we've always been guiding that uh, we will be extremely conservative in the first 24 months. So in the first 24 months, we'll hardly be opening uh, maybe four to six branches only in a newer state. Uh, because the 24 months observatory period is an extremely critical period for us, where we get to see a variety of uh, things clearly on the ground. That includes our own people. That includes the first few loans that we have lent. We have also told you in the past that, uh, you know, for the first probably a year or so, every loan that we give out in a new state is approved either by MD or myself. So, you know, we are that much very, very clearly focused on what are the set of customers that we are building in a new state? Who are the teams that, you know, we are getting in the first, uh, you know, few branches? Uh, so these uh, new states, we will pick it up slowly. Uh, if you look at Madhya Pradesh, which we opened about five years back, today Madhya Pradesh has more than 50 branches. So it's not going to, growth is not going to come in a sudden manner in newer states. The growth is more than adequately compensated in uh, the southern market. Uh, in the newer markets, uh, this year we've identified Rajasthan, UP, and Gujarat. 
apart from expansion in maharashtra so these are the new markets where you will clearly see us putting up branches and putting up an investing teams uh, but the growth will definitely take time to pick up in uh, these new states okay interesting sir. thank you so just last question side uh, why you mentioned that competitive uh, competitive intensity is there from everywhere you are not concerned much about it so what are the key areas or pointers you are right now focusing on in terms of concerning points or anything you want to highlight See, we are we are focusing on what we have been focusing for last 20 years. Nothing special that we are taking from a competitive uh, intensity perspective. As I said, a competitive intensity should be there for a right product. So people are all willing to get into this uh, segment, bigger NBFCs and smaller finance banks. But the experience says it's not so easy game to play. Uh, but the, uh, the good part to play sub one lakh and more than 10, 15 lakhs uh, area where people. find it very comfortable uh, but uh, nothing specific that we are worried about competitiveness and uh, uh, we are not growing aggressively or we are not growing slowly or we are tweaking our lending rates nothing doing from our side we are doing our business as we been doing uh, but uh, one point what i wanted to uh, uh, emphasize here we don't want to be a su- sudden uh, lender anymore so we want to be at pan india maybe this is a, a, a maybe the competitiveness is maybe one of the reasons where we wanted to get into newer locations also so we are very keen as ranga said today we are at nine states we'll be at uh, 10 11 states uh, uh, year or two so that also uh, keeps us more safer that we have reached to the more geographies and more people know five star okay great so thanks all the best thank you thank you The next question is from the line of Vivek Ramakrishnan from DSP Mutual Fund. Please go ahead. Sir, most of my uh, questions have been answered, and uh, good wishes to you all. Uh, just as a follow-up, in terms of when you go into a new state, are you finding any major cultural differences when you compare to the southern states where you are comfortable in? That's question number one. uh question number 2 is in terms of attrition when you do at the lower at the lower management level which is what you said uh, uh where do they usually go do you have any idea whether they going to another bank or an nbfc that's question number 2 and question number 3 i mean you know, we buy into your optimism but uh, if you could tell us what worries you uh, on the ground uh, that would be useful also thank you uh from a, a newer state i'll ask ranga to answer on question number 2 i can't uh, answer anything with with whom we are going towards uh, i think see this business model is very unique uh, i don't think uh, no one uh, does this kind of uh, uh, business model underwriting collection setup which i have not seen any any nbfcs because we have not copied from anyone everything is been uh, uh, built here from the base of the experience so we don't uh, specifically take people from a specific name or specific uh, uh, entity uh, anyone wishes to grow their uh, career can join five star because they 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 can uh, they can grow their careers because the company is good the, the the growth rates are good the incentives are good the business model competitiveness is lower comparing to other products so anyone can join five star and earn a good uh, name and career in five star uh talking to the third point uh, which you said uh, uh I, i nothing a uh, specific concerns uh, me at this given point of time it is good that people all talk about uh, lending to small businesses we are happy to register ourselves that we are a category creator when no one saw this as a opportunity 20 years back we saw this as a opportunity and we never uh, uh, diverted into any other product we just stick down with the same customers same profiles for decades so we are very happy that uh, more people are looking into it so i don't uh, feel any concern i feel uh, a bit proud that uh, we are able to take this category from informal to slowly to the formal side so we got the first question where you were asking about uh, you know any cultural differences in uh, new york state there will be definitely cultural differences i think uh, in india you know taste uh changes every 50 kilometers so you will not find that even restaurants are very similar in uh, 50 kilometers so which means when we are entering a new state there will be cultural uh, differences see there are fundamentally the set of customers that we target that does not differ we still go behind essential services we still go behind the self employed the category but within that uh, you know there will always be slight uh, nuances in cash flows in repayment track 
I think more importantly, there will be a lot of cultural differences between people, uh, which is our own people. So, you know, the, the every state has a unique uh, culture, you know, in, in terms of uh, loyalties, in terms of uh, people sticking to a particular company, people building careers, attrition levels are very different. So that's, uh, every state is different. I don't think, you know, we are saying one state is better than the other. But it's important for you to understand the nuances of that state to make sure that, you know, you're an attract attractive employee in that uh, new state. Also, what differs significantly between state to state is land records are very different. The way you evaluate uh, legal risks, the way you evaluate title deeds and, you know, go and get your mortgage registered, it's different. Uh, you know, it's uh, it's not one country still. Uh, so there are multiple uh, nuances, especially when it comes to dealing with ancestral properties and the way title deeds have been passed on through generations. Uh, it's a very different and nuanced uh, market. So it takes time for you to learn, you know, these things, which is why in the first 24 months uh, of entering a new state, we don't put pressure at all from a growth perspective for the newer state. It's more important for us to understand all the nuances set the fundamentals uh, right and then you know set up the state for a uh, growth for a longer period of time. Uh, Vivek, uh, sorry I misunderstood your question. If your question is on the attrition, where does our people go? If that is your question, uh, uh, yes, uh, today as this business model is getting more hotter and hotter, uh, people finding uh, uh, right talent from here, they choose five-star uh, uh, employees to pick and uh, build it. But it is not so easy for that uh, uh, to uh, people just to poach our employees and start building the five-star model. But as you rightly said, this is not a model that can be built in overnight. It has to be built with the exercise. So I can't name where the people are moving in. Yes, there is a good amount of demand uh, uh, from our employee side, uh, uh, which, which, is get, which is getting poached by other uh, NBFCs and small finance banks. So thank you very much and wish you all the best. Thank you. Thank you. The next question is from the line of Pallavi Deshpande from Samiksha Capital. Please go ahead. Yes, sir. Thank you for taking my question. Just wanted to know of these new branches that you'll be adding, uh, what would be the spread of uh, South versus non-South? And second was on the collections in cash, what would be the percentage of them? So the, the the what we are being guiding to the market is uh, close to 75 to 25, uh, 75 is to 25. That is, 75% uh, of the branches will be in south, and 20-25% uh, of the branches will be in uh, rest of the country. So that's what, what what we are being guiding. More or less, it's it's aligning with uh, with the with the same uh, percentage. What I said. Uh, from a cash collection versus uh, non-cash. Uh, we are at uh, close to 55% of our collections comes from uh, cash and 45% comes from uh, uh, non-cash in all types of digital uh, media, including uh, digital type, including the NASH. Uh, it used to be around 65% um, uh, more. Uh, that is slowly coming down to 55 now, and it may also further come down as we move forward. But we are not uh, we are not here to guide a market that we will be at so and so percentage of cash because we are very comfortable in cash. As long as customer is comfortable, we are comfortable. As long as customer feels digital is comfortable, we are comfortable. So there's nothing hard and fast from our side. As we speak, uh, we have 55 percent of our collections coming in cash. Mm -hmm. This one on the guidance with regard to the branches, right? So uh, not wrong. A year back, we were looking at a uh, you know, more spreading out to the non-South region. Uh, is there anything, uh, you know, is there a change in uh, strategy? Just uh, wanted to understand that because, I mean, the opportunity may be still big in South. Is that the reason? No, no opportunity in, uh, yeah, we have, we have not changed this uh, pattern what I guided earlier. Uh, it was 75 to 80 in percentage of branches in South and uh, 25 to 20 percent of the branches uh, will be in uh, non-South, to be more specific. Uh, one or two branches can miss this way or that way, but broadly our thought process is very clear. We want to be a very strong player in North uh, going forward. Going forward means uh, going forward for next few years, not few quarters. But having said that, uh, South is a very big market. Uh, just to give a comparison, HDFC has close to 500 branches in Tamil Nadu. I just saw it in public domain. It's a public data. So we have only 120 branches here. If a bank has 500 branches, why can't we? So that's from one state. 
if you multiply that with four big states of south which is andhra telangana and karnataka you have a very huge uh, opportunity in south itself but as i said uh, uh, from a competitive intensity to uh, improve our presence uh, where we are not there we are very clearly focused to focus on uh, uh, non south uh, which is the central and the northern uh, western part of our countries so there is no change in the thought process still we feel south is the dominant uh, uh, place to operate and uh, uh, non south is very key uh, from five stars perspective so we are investing a lot in non south too Yes, sir. so two years hence do we see this mix changing because like you said you you know you wait for two years for the branches to mature you open only three or four uh, you see you learn about the state and then you open more branches so does this uh, mix change uh, two years hence uh, in terms of uh, 75 25 certainly it will change all depends upon the results that what we are getting from the non south branches uh, what we have put in rajasthan uttar pradesh uh, and expanding in gujarat and maharashtra So we will wait and see how the results are. But as I said, uh, we will not push for the results. Let the results comes as it comes. When the results are good, when the green shoots are able to, we are able to see there. Definitely, we will not shy away uh, by revising the guidance of seventy uh, five to twenty five. Uh, right, sir. Thank you, sir. Thank you. Thank you. The next question is from the line of Satyashri Chatterji from Grow AMC. Please go ahead. uh thank you for the opportunity sir and uh, congratulations on the great numbers uh my question is on more on the environment part that already have touched upon it but like we are seeing and commentaries from the consumption companies that rural and semi urban consumption demand has been slow and but on that perspective we are seeing that growth or you as well as some of these industries has been very strong So can you please touch upon how you are seeing more of the like demands and cash flows of your customers, and there are you do you have to like pedal more to more towards distribution driven growth and customer acquisition driven growth for more customer acquisitions or it, it is a strong demand any which way? Uh, so Saptarishi, you know there are uh, two ways to tackle uh, you know this question. One is what are you seeing primarily from a consumption perspective on uh, rural and semi urban and uh, our growth is purely not dependent only on that aspect our growth is also dependent on how much of conversions that we are able to do from people who are moving from unorganized to organized sector so as as far as that is concerned we are clearly seeing a trend uh, in market after market wherever we are able to open uh, new branches we are seeing very very good traction and we are able to convert more and more people from you know unorganized money lending to more organized uh, this one uh, lending so that is what is giving us a solid growth on the ground so uh, the strategy has not changed uh, for us i think that is what is uh, giving us the confidence from a growth guidance uh, perspective also uh, of course it is going to be a combination of distribution led uh, growth so that's where we have now increased the guidance in terms of number of branches that uh, you know we are willing to open in a particular year we have already opened 83 branches for this year and mr pati has guided uh, just now that we will be at least opening another 40 to 45 branches during this year itself so it is going to be a combination of distribution led strategy and the fact of people moving from unorganized to organized that is giving us a combination of good growth guidance and it's very helpful just one part on this is that uh, these increased revised of branches are we going much deeper into the geographies like from tier 3 to tier 4 to tier 5 tier 6 for the branches so we have two uh, branch led strategies one is what do we do in the southern markets and uh, second is what do we do on the non south uh, markets so as far as the southern markets are concerned uh, the clear strategy of the company is penetrate deeper and deeper Uh, we have already you know going up to tier 7 cities and uh, we still have huge opportunity for us uh, you know even within tier 6 tier 7 cities in each of the southern markets where we are already present so uh, as far as south is concerned the strategy clearly is penetrate deeper and deeper uh, open more branches you know expand the franchise and attract uh, customers more and more but as far as the non south uh, you know locations are concerned we are just putting up the first few branches probably in a particular state Uh, so in these states uh, you know we are still not going very very deep most of our branches are still in probably tier 2 to tier 3 or tier 4 cities uh, we will penetrate these larger cities first uh, you know get a hang of you know the culture and the state and slowly penetrate in uh, you know these uh, states as we move forward from here 
and it is very helpful and last question is on the aims part like uh, wanted to know the year volley touch upon on the competition but wanted to know what are the yield level that your competition is working on and therefore the differential of your yield versus competition and overall let's say from 2 3 years down the line do you see that growth and yield will be a challenge and if the situations and demands worsen which one will you prioritize more on either on yield or on growth so satresh i think uh... you know on the yields if you look at from a competition perspective we are uh, we are probably lower uh, if not uh, we are at least at par if not lower than our competitors uh, so you know it is not very differential and the kind of demand that we are getting if we are way off from the market you know this is not the demand that we will be getting so we are at par with the market in fact uh, we are actually better than some of the bigger players also in terms of the yields and like we have been guiding see our intent is not to keep the yields at where they are today our intent is to ensure that we maintain the spreads uh now we had we had quite some benefit on the cost of funds coming through in the last about 4 to 6 quarters but given the very volatile interest rate environment we are not pass some of these benefits to our borrowers which we will start gradually passing on you know once the interest rate uh, environment becomes a lot more predictable uh so the question is not compromising yield or compromising growth or whatever i think the question is more towards ensuring that we are a responsible lender lending at the right uh, interest rates to our borrowers see the segment is not very price sensitive so you know a percentage difference in yield for a 7 year loan will probably translate to about 70 to 80 rupees of emi uh, every month for a lack of loan so it's not a very price sensitive segment but at the same time we want to be a responsible lender and you know operate at around the uh, 12 to 13% kind of a spread in a steady state scenario so once the interest rate environment settles i think we'll start seeing some benefits that we pass on to our borrowers uh, so you know in terms of uh, not not with a view to ensure that we get the growth that we want but like i said you know being a responsible lender and ensuring that the borrowers get the optimal cost for their borrowings great sir wish you all the best thank you thank you the next question is from the line of arvin from sundaram alternates please go ahead uh, hello sir uh, thank you so much, so much for the opportunity and congratulations on the great set of numbers uh, most of my questions are answered uh, i just have like uh, one question like on uh, uh, this gross stage 3 assets uh, in terms of one year lag uh, i can see that like from first quarter of 2023 it's been inching up uh, uh, is that like uh, is there any some cause of concern there Uh, in the in those stocks and uh, i have one more question on other income or come to that so i think the the intent is not uh, you know concern the the point is also that when you are growing the lag is slightly higher uh, and you know compared to what you have been seeing in fy21 or fy22 uh, the growth was also much much lower so the build up was was much lesser uh, but having said that you know if you look at the last uh, uh you know uh, the last quarter uh, numbers also uh, typically the one year lag has always been at around the 1.75 to 2% level and this is this is something that we have shown you know we q2 fy21 which was a covid period q2 fy22 which was again a covid period and q2 fy24 so i think largely the numbers will be around the 2% levels which is which is where you know this number has always been even in the past in fact it used to be more if we extrapolated a few quarters earlier when we were on a you know much faster uh, growth space this number would have been higher but a one year lag will typically settle at around the uh, you know 1.75 to 2% levels this and this also has the new rba norm built into right it's 1.35% so you should also take that into consideration when you look at a q2 fy21 or a q2 fy22 that does not have the rba norm getting built so technically if you see 1.7% of q2 fy22 is not an apple to apple comparison as against 1.95% of q2 fy24 there is a the the q2 fy22 would have been a 90 plus number of about 1 to 1.1% we say what we are looking at the new irac norm of 1.35% for q2 fy24 So you'll also have to factor in for the 2030 basis point increase. Oh, thank you, sir. Thank you. And I have just two more questions. Uh, so one is on other income. Like other income doesn't uh, look like it is connected to disbursements. 
even though the disbursements have grown, grown quarter on quarter like uh, other income as in the especially the p income core income as in grown that is one thing and uh, operating expenses uh, i have one question on that like uh, so we are investing uh, heavily in the it like uh, either for erp or other technological like transformation uh, stuff uh, uh, will that have an impact on you know opex to assets ratio or cost to income ratio like uh, in a significant way so firstly arvin on the uh, your your observation is right on the other incomes the other incomes are predominantly you know uh, investment incomes that we earn on our fds that we earn on our mutual funds on the excess liquidity that we carry so it does not really have a straight correlation to the disbursements that we do it uh, it depends on you know the kind of borrowings that we do and the yields that are available out there so last year the other incomes are actually lower because the yields were much lower in the market the yields are definitely you know getting better and uh, which is why you know you are, are seeing the other incomes uh, getting higher uh, see in terms of the operating expenses while we are definitely putting you know a lot more investment into the technology and all that rather than looking at either an operational expenses in absolute quantum or whatever i think the way that you will also have to see is look at the cost to incomes so which is where we guided our cost to incomes is expected to be you know around the 35 to 37% range and this is sort of remained range bound for the last uh, you know four to six quarters ever since we have been uh, you know even prior to that it was range bound but the last five quarters when we have been public i think it has remained range bound around the 36 to 37% level we are very confident that despite the investments that we made in, make into technology we are not doing anything that uh, that's probably a sunk cost or that will give us benefits over a longer period of time we are reaping the benefits so you will see the cost to incomes in you know, a stabilize around those levels uh, uh, in the quarters to come as well so no adverse impact expected on the pnl because of you know additional technology spends or the uh, slightly increased operating expenses Sure, sure. But my question just was on just on the core being complete, forty-two crores, I guess. Uh, but yeah. Sorry, Arvin, is there something that is uh, that's remaining unanswered for you? Uh, yes, sir. Like uh, I was asking specifically on the core fee income alone, like that forty-two crores. Uh, I thought that was just related to disbursement. I understand the other income is. Uh, Uh, you know, uh, summation of the uh, core fee income of uh, you know based on disbursements and then like uh, investments we make and other. Today the, in, today the core fee income is also part of the interest income. If you look at the interest oh. income, it comprises of interest on loans, it comprises of interest on uh, fixed deposits, it comprises of processing fee, and the other legal and operational expenses where the proportion remains unamortized. So you, everything is getting clubbed under interest income. Uh, you know in slide 47 that we have given the other two numbers that you are talking about which is net gain on fair value changes is primarily on account of the uh, uh, mutual fund incomes that we do and the uh, fee and other income will be you know primarily recovery of bad debt and the other uh, uh, incidental incomes that we get on account of certain storage costs and all that the numbers are anyway you know fairly muted it's about 7-8 crores per quarter okay okay thank you thank you thank you thank you The next question is from the line of Harshavardhan Agarwal from Bandhan AMC. Please go ahead. Hi sir, thanks for the opportunity. So just wanted to understand. You mentioned that Harshavardhan sir, down. can you speak loudly? Your voice is very low. Okay. Sure. Hi, hi sir. So just wanted to understand. Uh, we mentioned that you know, we are talking about budget in the second half of the year, and the total new budget will be around 120. As per and our earlier guidance was around 70-80. So just wanted to. Uh, Your thought process as to how our OPEX would look like in the second half, because I believe when you open a browser, there are some marketing expenses etc. that could inch up. So does that mean that our OPEX in the second half would be higher than the OPEX on, on the, from the first half? Uh, see, I think uh, uh, the good part is uh, if you break that 120, uh, uh, 80, 80 branches have been opened in first six months itself. So all the cost has been uh, incurred uh, in the in the cost uh, as we have shown in the September itself. So it's only the balance uh, 40, 45 branches which will be opening in the next six months. But the good part is the 80 branches which got opened in the first six months starts to react more uh, positively for the next six months. So that will uh, adequately take care of the uh, income side. Uh, I think uh, I'll ask Shrikant to explain it a little more. 
Yeah, see, on the operating expenses side, uh, you know, uh, what we always say is, irrespective of the branches that we put in, our break-even is one of the strongest. In about six to nine months, you know, we are able to break even at a branch level, and uh, even for covering for fixed costs at the head office level, this is like nine to twelve months that we are able to do. So from that perspective, there is no adverse impact that we are expecting, you know, either OPEX as a percentage of AUM, or like I updated in the earlier question, in terms of the cost to income. So the broad guidance around the OPEX to AUM of about 6%, 6, 6.5%, and the cost to income guidance of about 35 to 37% continues to stand even in a growing scenario. Sure, sure. Thanks. Thanks a lot, sir. Uh, we will take one more final question. Okay, sir. Thank you. The next question is from the line of Nitesh from Investec. Please go ahead. Uh, thanks for the opportunity, sir. Uh, sir, a uh, couple of questions. First is, uh, uh, how is the vintage uh, 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 to uh, 12 month uh, MOB uh, stage 3 for us? Uh, and second is, how are the VT out rates uh, we are monitoring, uh, we are seeing in our, in our portfolio? Uh, so, Nitesh, I think the point is, in terms of the stage 3 one year vintage, we will not see much at all. Like what we what we say is, you know, we don't, what we track as quick mortality account, that is very, very far and few for us. So you will not see one year vintage loans which are getting into stage 3. Typically, the breakup of stage 3 will be more like 3 plus years loans. Because our belief is, if for whatever, you know, little bit of shocks or delays as a customer could do, he may probably uh, delay, you know, 1 in 18 installments or so. So that means typically for him to get into stage 3 will be at the end of the third year or so. So you will not really see too much of uh, one year vintage in stage 3. The quick mortality is extremely uh, low. Uh, sorry, I, what is the second question I just asked? Uh, what are the balance transfer rates? See, today our balance transfers both in and out are extremely minimal. Uh, like we said, our business model is built to displace the money lenders. So while we'll be taking a lot of loans away from the unorganized markets, those don't typically classify as balance transfers in. And similarly, you know, our borrowers are happy with us as long as we provide them what they want in terms of the loan quantum, good service and uh, you know the flexibility in terms of repayment, they are happy to stay with us. So I think you will not see either of these numbers crossing about 2-3% uh, you know both BT in and BT out. Okay, okay. Sure. Thank you. That's it for my side. Thank you. Ladies and gentlemen, that was the last question for today. I would now like to hand the conference over to Mr. Lakshmi Pati Dinadayalan, sir, for closing comments. Yeah, uh, uh, thank you, participant. I know there is a few more questions lined up, but uh, we have already uh, uh, crossed one hour, 45 minutes. Uh, and thank you for uh, patiently being with us. Uh, uh, we have we apologize for the pending questions. Definitely, we will take it up in the next uh, earning call. Or you can reach out to the IR team where the number has been uh, given in the website where we will take up your questions. Uh, to, the, to conclude, as I said, uh, we have been with you for last uh, full, one full year with five uh, quarters of uh, uh, numbers. And uh, what we say and what we deliver uh, now matches very clearly. And we are very confident that uh, this category, what we have built in the last 20 years, here to stay and here to grow. And Five Star has a edge uh, comparing with other lenders, the experience what we got in last 20 years will help us to scale through uh, with the right quality and right profitability uh, without missing these two. So thank you again uh, for uh, reaching out in this conference call and uh, waiting for a long time. And we will meet uh, in the next earning call. Thank you. Thank you. On behalf of ICICI Securities, that concludes this conference. Thank you for joining us. And you may not disconnect your line.